Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We begin with the state of Michigan and the pause on the use of the Johnson & Johnson coronavirus vaccine as our COVID cases continue to spike. The governor's been telling us that vaccines are the way out. The CDC and the FDA have told doctors and nurses to stop giving the one-shot coronavirus vaccine. Nearly 7 million doses of the vaccine have been given, but in the U.S., six cases have been detected of a very uncommon type of blood clot. It's a tiny number, but a massive impact. We're covering what this means for those waiting for the vaccine and what it means for the governor's plan. First, let's start with Local 4's medical doctor, Frank McGeorge. Uh, doc, this is a, it's not a big number, uh, but uh, apparently enough concern to pump the brakes. Yeah, Devin, it is. You know, so the specific blood clot is called a cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. And that's basically a clot in a vein that drains blood from a person's brain. Now that can lead to increased pressure in the skull and even bleeding. That condition is very rare by itself, but the question with regard to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is even more rare because it's also happening in the setting of low platelets. So far, there have been six cases in the U.S., all in women between 18 and 48 years old and occurring between 6 and 13 days after receiving the vaccine. One patient has died and one is in critical condition. The recommended pause in administration of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was issued out of an abundance of caution when the concern was recognized. There's heightened attention to potential clotting problems with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine due to similarities it shares with the AstraZeneca vaccine, which has undergone extra scrutiny in other countries due to blood clots. We don't have a definitive cause, but um, the, the probable cause that we believe may be uh, involved here that we can speculate is an immune response uh, that occurs very, very rarely um, after some people receive the vaccine. Uh, and that immune response uh, leads to activation of the platelets and these extremely rare blood clots. For people who got the vaccine more than a month ago, the risk to them is very low at this time. For people who recently got the vaccine within the last couple weeks, they should be aware to look for any symptoms. If you receive the vaccine and develop severe headaches, abdominal pain, leg pain, or shortness of breath, you should contact your health care provider and seek medical treatment. Now, tomorrow, the CDC Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices is going to meet to discuss the issue and hopefully provide further guidance. Meanwhile, the FDA really wants to get the word out to health care providers that this particular condition should not be treated in the usual way with the blood thinner heparin because that could worsen the condition. So any indication, do we understand yet exactly how long this pause on the vaccine is going to last or can we know? Well, unfortunately, we can't know at this point. We don't know precisely. It could end up being just a matter of days, we hope, while they basically work on guidance for what to watch for and how to treat this condition, as well as really possibly narrowing the groups that are best suited to receive this vaccine. But I do really want to emphasize this issue is specific only to the Johnson & Johnson single-shot vaccine. The Pfizer and Moderna two-dose mRNA vaccines have not had any similar concerns raised. So important to note. All right, Doc, we'll keep you close by. All right, now to today's coronavirus numbers, and they are not good. 8,867 new cases in the past 24 hours. That's just 900 short of the highest daily count the state has ever seen back in November. The state is also reporting 74 new deaths, including 37 from a review of past vital records. More vaccines are being delivered here to Michigan, though that is, of course, just part of the story. Six million doses have been distributed, but 328,000 of those are J and J vaccines that can't be used right now. 5.3 million shots thus far have gone into Michigan arms. Now, amid this current surge, Governor Whitmer has stood firm, saying that vaccines are what is going to bring us out of all of this. And she specifically referenced the importance of the J and J vaccine to reach that goal. So now, with that vaccine off the table, will it change things moving forward? Sean Lay is live tonight with what both the governor and Mayor Duggan have to say about just that. Sean, good evening. And Kimberly, you just read those numbers, those alarming numbers. We're in a COVID crisis, and now Michigan has lost one of three vaccines being used to try to 
to push this virus down to try to fight back. And let's get right to the governor because she says if and when the J&J vaccine gets the green light, the state needs it and will use it. And if those numbers hold, I think we should still have high confidence in the safety and efficacy of the J&J &J vaccine. It is an important added tool in our arsenal to combat COVID. So um, this is concerning. And of course, I'm going to continue to push for more vaccines to come into Michigan. But at this point, I don't know that there's a whole lot more we can say other than we're going to closely uh, monitor and follow the CDC and FDA guidance. But right now, Michigan just lost one of three vaccine tools to fight back this raging surge of COVID cases and continues to ask Washington to send more of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. Detroit was also using Johnson & Johnson, but more than a month ago, Mayor Duggan first rejected it and then accepted shipments of J&J &J vaccine. I made a decision that Detroit was going to be Moderna Pfizer based, based on my own research, and 98% of Detroiters have chosen Moderna Pfizer. Wayne County was first shipped 28,000 doses of Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Well, we all woke up to the surprise that, that we weren't planning for. 12,000 doses are left, many given to Dearborn and Livonia, who immediately stopped using it. If it has been proven that, that these cases are linked to the vaccine, then we have lost to an extra vaccine. And it, if it has not been, then I think the confidence of the public has been a little bit shaken, and it's going to take a lot to restore that, that confidence. Let's also talk about the Ford Field FEMA mass vaccination clinic. We've been telling you the final two weeks of that clinic was supposed to be the one shot Johnson and Johnson vaccine. I am told there was an emergency meeting held today. Two options were being looked at. One would be to give the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine and then extend the clinic for a few more weeks or give the Pfizer and Moderna first vaccine and ask county health departments to then step in and give the second shot when it's time, guys. And Sean, this really has to be devastating to areas that are relying heavily on it. And you're exactly right. Coming up at six o'clock, I will show you where clinics are being canceled and in one place where the timing absolutely could not be any worse. Yeah. OK, we look forward to uh, talking to you again at six, Sean. We appreciate it. Meanwhile, in the city of Detroit, the neighborhood vaccination program was designed around that one shot J&J &J vaccine. And here we are today, just one day into the program's launch, and they were left scrambling to get Pfizer and Moderna vaccines to fill that void. Of course, that's still two shots. Larry Spruill following that part of the story. Uh, Larry, this came as a big surprise to the folks who showed up this morning. A huge shot, Kimberly and Devin, for a lot of people that showed up here. Now, this place has been busy all throughout the day. Many people we talked to were expecting to get the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. They showed up here. They heard the news. Things were changing. Take a listen. I'm shocked because we sitting here. We've been waiting since eight o'clock and they said that um, we just started seeing these reports saying they was going to pause the Johnson and Johnson shot. Frustrated and annoyed. That's how Tori Hobbs felt when she arrived with her daughter to get their Johnson and Johnson vaccination shot Tuesday morning. My daughter here from college and that was the reason me getting the Johnson and Johnson because it was one shot. Hobbs said that's the main reason they signed up for Johnson and Johnson. But Tuesday she found out that the Food and Drug Administration and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention or the CDC recommended a temporary pause while they investigate the shot some more after finding six U.S. cases of a rare and severe type of blood clot forming in people after getting the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Meanwhile, those scheduled for Johnson & Johnson here at the Philip Randolph Career Tech Center on Detroit's west side had the option of getting another vaccine. Although an inconvenience, some say they'd rather be safe than sorry. I think that uh, it's a good change for uh, some people because the, I guess the vaccine could uh, just could just like uh, hurt some people because um, I guess what's in it. I mean, this is just just as fine. I just want to be safe. You know what I mean? And they also talked to another woman who was already on the fence about getting the vaccine. Now she is forced to make another decision. And also we are hearing from cities like Livonia and Warren about how this is affecting them. I am working on that part of the story all new tonight at six. We are live on the choice West Side tonight. Larry Spruill. Local four. All right, Larry, we will see you then. Now we know there are so many questions, so we've posted a lot of answers about the J and J vaccine. Pause and click on Detroit.com, including one of the expert on blood clots has to say about the risks. We're also continuing to help you find appointments to get the vaccine 
all on the homepage right now at Click on Detroit. Two Minnesota law enforcement officials are stepping down in the aftermath of Sunday's police shooting of 20 year old Dante Wright. The mayor of Brooklyn Center announced Officer Kim Potter and Police Chief Tim Gannon both resigned from the department effective immediately. Potter is accused of killing 20 year old Dante Wright. The former chief claimed Potter grabbed and fired her weapon, mistaking her gun for her taser. The resignations come after two days of protests in Brooklyn Center. Today, Dante Wright's family was calling for justice. My son was laying there unresponsive. My love. That was the last time that I seen my son. That's the last time I heard from my son, and I have had no explanation since then. Meanwhile, people have started paying their respects at a makeshift memorial for Wright at the intersection where he was killed. Closer to home in the aftermath of Wright's death, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib calls for police to be abolished. Tlaib tweeted Monday night, quote, it wasn't an accident. Policing in our country is inherently and intentionally racist. Dante Wright was met with aggression and violence. I am done with those who condone government funded murder. No more policing, incarceration and militarization. It can't be reformed, end quote. A big rally on the Capitol steps in Lansing today. New tonight, the one message the NAACP and a handful of other groups had for lawmakers as they prepare to tackle an important issue. Let's drop in on Ben. Hey guys, uh, rain free today, but those rain chances rising in the next couple and could be a couple flakes coming with it. Uh, but the bigger story may be temperatures actually going below normal. We'll see how long that lasts coming up. We know that business is ever changing with technology and that's exactly what's happening in the car dealer business. I was headed in this direction, the pandemic really kick-started it. And so now one of the largest automotive groups in the entire nation is sold. But what's behind it? We're going to take a look. Rod, but first, a state trooper opens fire along I-96. We'll have that story next. 